Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Today I am joined by Jen Goodfriend, and we are talking all about mindset and self-limiting beliefs. And mindset is key to thriving as a business owner, especially being a mompreneur. So without further ado, Jen, welcome into the podcast. Welcome and thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. So before we dive in today, tell us more about yourself, who you are and what you do. So my name is Jen, and as Amy said, I, uh, I'm a business and mindset coach, and I work with female entrepreneurs who are looking to hit six figures and beyond in their business, but while also working less, so 20 hours a week or less, so that we have time and financial freedom, because I know from past experience, you can build a six-figure business working 80 hours a week, but nobody really started their business to make less and work more. So I'm here to change that statistic and help women actually make more while working less. And who doesn't want that, right? Because the the culture we're living in right now, it's it's almost that we glorify the hustle. Do you see that too? Oh, all the time. I actually went through that. I had a business back in my 20s and I literally worked myself into the hospital and caused major health issues that took me like I'm still recovering 10 years later from because it was just embedded in my mind from a young child. Work harder. The more you work, the more successful you'll be. Just keep pushing, keep pushing. Things aren't working. Put in more hours, put in more effort. And that doesn't work. And it was this, it was because of that first experience that I uncovered limiting beliefs. And I had so many limiting beliefs that every time I started to get success, those limiting beliefs shoved me back and said, "Uh uh-uh, you're not allowed this. And then I didn't know. So I just kept thinking, oh, I'm not working hard enough, which was actually a limiting belief I had that you have to work hard to make money. So I just kept working harder and harder and harder till I literally couldn't work anymore. And my mind and my body said, "Uh uh-uh, you're done. Yeah. And isn't it crazy how your, your mind and body will shut down? Like you work yourself so hard. Yes, you will end up with other health issues. You will end up burnt out, stressed out, and just frustrated by it all. But it doesn't have to be that way. And I love that you're out to change the narrative. So how do we even start to identify some of these self-limiting beliefs that are holding us back? So the biggest thing I tell women is listen to that inner critic, that negative inner voice, when it pops in your head, it's a pretty good sign that something is there. So listen to what that voice is saying. Most of us, it's just like on repeat all the time that we don't even know it's there anymore. And it's just going on. But as long as that negative voice is going, you're feeding your brain all these negative thoughts. And 95% of the women or more that I work with and in the world, have the limiting beliefs that they're not enough. I'm not good enough, smart enough, pretty enough, or multiple versions of that. And as long as you have those beliefs, you're not going to allow yourself to be successful because if you don't feel you're good enough, then you're not worthy and deserving of success and you're gonna do everything to silently sabotage yourself. So that negative inner voice is gonna be like, oh, well, why do you think you can do that? Who do you think you are to go on a podcast? Who do you think you are to charge that amount of money? Like it just starts eating at you to the point where most women just eventually, you either burn out because you're working too hard or you feel like this isn't for you and you just give up and walk away. Yeah, yeah, that is absolutely beautiful. And I love too how you're like, you know, stop silencing that inner critic, listen to it because that's where you start to identify some of these these thought trains that are going through your head that you don't even know are there. Yeah, so our limiting beliefs are unconscious, which means we are not conscious of them. So there's two parts of the brain, the conscious and the unconscious. The conscious is the part of your brain that's listening to us right now going, okay, yeah, I understand. Oh, this is an interesting topic. But there's that second part of our brain, which is the most important, the unconscious. And this is literally where our programs are stored. So think of it like a hard drive on a computer. This is the part of the computer that tells your brain how to run, how to operate, your values, your belief system and 50% of your programs for your mind are created up to the age of five. 
And by age 18, it's about 85 to 90%. So by the time you're 18, you're literally programmed with your belief system. And unfortunately, that first five to six years where you get most of your programs, those are, we don't have rational thought as a human being yet. Like if you're all moms, so you know what, you know, up to age six is like, everything they learn is through touch, through sight, through hearing. So if you, um, your partner says a swear word, and all of a sudden your child's running around saying a swear word, that's how we pick up limiting beliefs as well. So your child could innocently be listening in on a conversation you're having um, and have a limiting belief. Like for me, I picked up my first one at only three days of age, listening to my mom talk to her friend about my birth, saying the birth was difficult, the pregnancy was difficult, she's a difficult baby. So at three days of age, I took on this belief of I'm difficult, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, and carried that throughout my whole life, which now using my rational mind, I think is absolutely stupid. But I was a baby with no rational thought, no rational mind. And I see this in my clients all the time, as young children, seeing things, internalizing those things and making a belief system out of them. And then as adults, we don't know these programs are running in the background. So we can't fix them because we don't even know they're there. We just know that something consciously is not working we can't do something we're procrastinating we're sabotaging we have these bad habits but we have no clue why yeah oh that's powerful so how do we harness the subconscious and bring that into conscious is it simply by noticing the thoughts and becoming aware or how do we how do we pull that subconscious to the conscious awareness Yeah, so there's a few different ways. Um, I'm a little biased. I love clinical hypnotherapy because that's what changed my life. Because the thing about clinical hypnotherapy is it's quick and easy. Like you literally get into that nice, relaxed, hypnotic trance. It's not like the stage shows. I will say that now. It's nothing like that. This is clinical hypnotherapy. You're literally in almost like a deep meditative state and you're just really relaxed. And when you're in that hypnotic state, you can access the subconscious directly. You literally can ask it any question, you can get it to tell you any story, and it'll go back in and easily tell you all the information you need. But if you're not quite ready for that, another option I really enjoy is journaling. Um, Psychology research has shown that when we put actual pen to paper, it somehow connects to our subconscious. So I always tell my ladies, like, start writing, like consciously, you have to kind of force yourself to start, like ask yourself a question, start writing, but eventually it's like it clicks in and it connects to your brain. And all of a sudden you start writing things that you're like, oh, I didn't know I thought that I didn't know where that came from. So it allows you another opportunity to access that subconscious on your own. It doesn't mean you can fix a subconscious, but it means you can start getting that information out to see what's actually going on in there. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And you know, the, especially journaling, it's something that doesn't take a lot of time, but can be such a powerful tool in just being able to identify those places that we are starting to limit ourselves. And you know, I know with me, it's funny because when you say some of these things out loud and challenge some of those those beliefs that go through our mind, it's almost silly in a way. It's like, really? I thought that? I was afraid of that? You know, when you start to get aware and question those and it's really powerful what what can come of it it really is it's so funny because a lot of women think they're afraid of of failure but the thing is is the mind understands failure because the mind is afraid of things it doesn't know but we all know failure we all know that if this business venture doesn't work out we just go back to our old life it's all good it's okay but we don't understand success. And it's funny because we're more afraid of success than we are of fear because what if people think differently of us? What happens if my partner doesn't like it? What happens if I have to work more for this? Like there's so many unknowns with success that a lot of women hold themselves back because they're afraid of those unknowns. And then you've got all these other limiting beliefs from people saying rich people are evil, these other money blocks. Um, making money is hard. You have to sacrifice family or money. Like you have to choose. So it's really funny that we would fear success over failure, but we do because it's unknown. Yeah. Yeah. And that right there is a huge, powerful mindset shift. I mean, it makes sense though, because yes, your brain, we've all failed. We've all failed. Like that's how we learn is through failure. But yes, A lot of us, this is so new. 
what happens when we do become successful in our businesses. And yeah, I can definitely see how that would lead to the silent self-sabotage. Yes. Oh my gosh. So do you think as women, we tend to silently sabotage ourselves more than our male counterparts? all the time like all the time even in career i remember in my corporate life i had to feel like i was 110 percent qualified for a position before i ever applied for that but yet a man would go in there with 40 percent of the qualification qualifications be like oh i'm good i can do this so even as women we feel we have to be fully qualified we have to be fully successful we have to 100 percent be what they're looking for in order to do that and this shows up in business too like um, imposter syndrome is huge. Women, oh, I just need another certification. I just need another training. I just need to hire another coach. I need to do this before I'm qualified. Um, procrastination is another one that women don't understand. Procrastination is a limiting belief. It is telling you that something isn't right. There's something going on and I'm you know, afraid to fail. I'm afraid of success. So I'm just going to keep procrastinating because it's easier to say I didn't do it because I procrastinated. I didn't get it done than it is to say I got it done and it didn't work and oh my god I failed so there's all those little things that we don't even realize are telling us that something's going on our mind we're hitting resistance because as soon as you hit resistance as soon as you feel resistance doing something in your business it's either a limiting belief or it's not in alignment I always say it's one of those two so then it's up to us to go okay if this isn't easy for me to do if I can't easily find a way to get it done what is it is it it's out of alignment and i shouldn't be doing it and it's not who i am or is there a limiting belief there that says i can't do this yes oh my gosh so true because you know for me the more i become aware of what's going on in between my two ears you know in my brain you know with my mindset the more i dig in I used to be such a procrastinator planner. So, you know, I, procrastination for me would be in the form of over planning, which again is perfectionism. So it's okay. Yes, I need to do this. No, I have to have X, Y, and Z done before I can do this. And it's just that over planning. It's the same thing as perfectionism. And then, you know, you hit that resistance and then you get stuck. And that's where so many people say is stuck. So I could not agree more with everything you're saying. I think this is such a valuable conversation. So now that we've identified these self-limiting beliefs, what are the easiest ways to remove them quickly and permanently? Yeah, so of course I always go back to hypnosis because it is like literally you can go in in one session, uncover the limiting belief, remove that limiting belief, and then give yourself a whole new program. And the nice thing is we, in hypnotherapy, we use your own words. So you tell us before the session, okay, if this block, if this belief was gone, how would you act? How would you feel? How would you show up? And then we literally program that into your subconscious. So think about it like if you're of my generation and remember the cassette tape, you literally go in and you record over the old cassette tape so you're reprogramming and putting new programs on so that when you come out you already start feeling great and you're like okay i'm good to go i'm feeling this and it just gets better and better and better each and every day after so that to me is like the best fastest easiest way but there are other ways as uh, as well um tapping i love tapping as well with my clients i use it as like a, i call it my first aid kit in between sessions so it's that go-to when sometimes we start falling back into old patterns because even when we're doing the mindset work we're going to feel great for a while and then we might fall back into some old limiting beliefs so it's like okay tap it out do some eft tapping that's going to remove any little energetic charges there so that you can continue on that healing journey feeling great feeling good and then again journaling of course these things take longer to do just because they don't work directly with the subconscious but you can be asking yourself like what is my limiting belief what's going on in there and then once you've got out all the negative stuff then you start writing in positive stuff how do i want to see my life and for me i do something called um 
scripting every day. I call it my manifesting journal. And what I do is every day I choose two or three goals that I'm working on and I write them out as if I've already achieved it. And it's like a full, like big old school notebook. And I fill up one sheet with these three goals and I literally just write it out as if it's already happened. What does it look like? How am I feeling? How did this happen? And I just write it all out. And it's amazing pretty much everything I've ever written in that book has come true because when you write it out like that and you write it as if it's already happened, the mind goes, I have to give this to you because our brain is literally wired to give us what we want. And so the things we think about and talk about and write about on a regular basis, it goes, okay, she wants this. She wants this. She keeps repeating this. I have to figure out a way of giving it to her. And then it works that out and makes it happen for you. So, so powerful. Jen, this was an amazing conversation. Where can we learn more about you? Yeah, so um, best way to find all my links is at the sixfigurefemaleentrepreneur.com slash links. And all my social media, all my free offers, um, paid offer, everything are all right there. So if you want any information or to follow me, that's the best place. Awesome. All right, mamas, until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode.